Happy freaking Valentine's Day. What a day. A day where single people seem to get all pouty, either wishing they had a significant other or bagging on relationships, hiding the fact that they're lonely. I don't know why we waste away this day talking about what we don't have when we could be talking about what we do have, which is an excuse to eat mountains of chocolate. Seriously, the best way to celebrate a holiday that you consider mediocre is to add a little bit of what you like into it. Now don't get me wrong, I would much prefer Valentine's Day if it was a second Halloween, which is why I tend to walk the line between these two holidays when February 14th comes around, which leads right into our main subject of this video. This drawing. I like it. I did it last year. The lighting's nice. I like the colors. It's overall a great picture, except for there's just one thing that kind of bothers me about it, which is it looks nothing like how I thought it in my head. Seriously, right after drawing this, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna retry this next year, and oh, look at that, it's next year. I can't believe it's already been a year. Anyways. Now, the suffering of drawings in your head not looking the same when you draw them in real life is something that all artists go through. And while some go on about complaining and like fake all the jokes about like, oh, this is the worst, I honestly not usually bothered by it, which is kind of weird after just me explain how much I am distraught by this drawing not being how I envisioned it. Why do we have this problem? Well, taking advice from other artists I know and from my own personal experience of just doing a lot of drawing, there are a couple reasons why images can never be quite replicated how we see it in our head into real life. There's the case of images not being fully flushed out in your head as well as you think they may be. Despite how much you may think you have it all planned out in your head, when you go about drawing, you start probably realizing that there are some things that you actually have not taken into consideration. Like for this drawing, I did not take in consideration what I want my character to wear as in clothes, and also I didn't even know what to do with their hair. Which with this current drawing, I still am not sure what to do with hair, so you see me fiddling around with that a bit more. I was, since my brain didn't completely register hair, I figured that it shouldn't be something too distracting. Though I wanted to have a little bit of like a crazy look to represent like me, you're kind of savage for pulling out your own heart. Anyways, which is why I usually, whenever I go in doing a drawing, even if I have a vision in my head, I usually am not expecting it to look exactly like that. Especially with another thing, whenever I envision things, it sometimes is often in other people's styles. Like for this drawing, I remember envisioning it kind of like a Destiny Blue style. It seems like something she would do. I guess that's why I envisioned that style when I thought of it. So taking both into consideration that you don't have the image fully fleshed out and also the fact that you probably didn't even envision it in your own style. There are very few drawing ideas that I come up with that are exactly in my style. And for the final thing, I think that hits a lot of people when it comes to trying to draw something just from an image that they have in their head is your mental library. There are better people to go in depth into what they mean by mental library, but I'll kind of try to give a gist of it if I can. Nope, nothing's coming to mind. Guess I won't. Okay, your mental library is pretty much what you can already envision in your head or pretty much what you already know what stuff looks like. Like pretty much you would Whatever you draw a lot, you probably already know how to draw, like a head or like maybe the shoulders to the neck. Whatever you are con constantly drawing, you are adding to your mental library. Which is the importance of practicing multiple things so you can add it to your mental library. I am saying mental library too many times. Which is also the importance of references because not everything you could envision- because the idea of just drawing things straight out of your head is bonkers if you do not know how things look like, so references are essential. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much told you that was gonna be a bad idea, but anyways, to the drawing. Now if I usually just accept the fact that drawings are not gonna turn out how exactly I envision it, I just aim for something that looks good, why am I held back by this one? Well, it's mainly the fact that I wanted like the strands coming out from the hole, and I didn't do it with the last one because I was struggling on how to do it, and I couldn't find a reference to do it. I swear, like two days later, I find a drawing of a ghost ripping a heart out, and it was like, that's like the perfect reference, where were you two days ago? Yeah, ultimately finding that drawing was the reason I decided to retry this, because I wanted the strands just to be like... <laughs> so this just really strayed from how I originally did envision it. Like, even the perspective wasn't how I saw it in my head. I'm not sure what made me go for this perspective when it was nothing how I envisioned it, so this time I did use Magic Poser to get the exact pose I kind of was going for, which is very convenient. Again, references. Useful. Also, I am kind of strained from what I do typically do, because like I said, I kind of envision this in a Destiny Blue style. Like using 
a pencil name that I cannot read instead of the mapping pen I usually use as well as coloring the line art so it just feels overall softer. That goal and also just making it a lot more brighter. I was aiming for more pastel but it just ends up being much more vibrant. But I am a lot more happier with it than last time because last time looks a little bit more gruesome and I wanted the blood. I mean strawberry jam to be more pink. I remember trying to make it darker in the past to give it more depth, but then it just ended up looking a lot more gruesome than I wanted it to. I still want it to look very light. This is still Valentine's Day. It's still supposed to be a happy day. Ignore the fact that she's tearing her heart out. <laughs> to give the whole depth, I mainly just tried to up the vibrancy when it went deeper and maybe a little bit of dark spot, a little bit of a darker hole representing that's going in. Now while this does look closer to how I envisioned it, and I am much happier with it, that doesn't necessarily mean the way you envisioned it is the best way to go, because sometimes the way you see it can have flaws, like the colors don't look the best together, or the position isn't the most accurate or looks a little odd. And in fact, one of the ideas that I had was having two images lay over each other, and that did not turn out looking the best, which I ultimately just ended up creating somewhat of a gift of it going back and forth between the two photos. And the way I saw it in my head, it did not look the nicest. So just because something doesn't turn out just how you envision it in your head does not make it a bad drawing. Have an idea, find references, and be willing to accept the fact that it's not going to turn out perfectly how you see it in your head, because sometimes it may even turn out better. That's what I would like you guys to walk away from this. This turned really sappy. Alright, here's the finalized drawing, and here's it compared to the old one, which makes it look a lot duller than before. I thought it was colorful, but compared to this new one, it's so sad looking. <laughs> and also, I like that it definitely looks way less gruesome. But in some ways, more at the same time. Now, if you please, allow me to waste more of your time. One of my friends in our group chat mentioned about a young adult dance happening in February, themed Black and Red Masquerade. Now, I'm not usually a big fan of going to dances unless I have a nice group of friends to go with, but then I saw the theme. Got me thinking of a look from Made You Look Lex, and I was like, oh, that will go so well, but I don't really have anything to go with it. And then I started thinking about, like, what if I make a dress? And so I was going to get my friend Peely to join me, but she did not want to go through all that work making a dress. But Malia did. So we made some sketches and we came up with ones that we liked and I would have shown you footage but it was really chaotic and we actually don't know much about sewing so we wouldn't have given any proper instructions in any way. This is how my makeup turned out. I changed it a bit from the original and sorry I didn't record any of it. I couldn't. If you want to know how to do this you could just go over to Lex's channel. She's fantastic. She is the queen of body painting. Here are the end results of both of our outfits, and can you believe Malia? She wore white to a black and red masquerade What a little rebel. She also wore this demon mask. And it was quite foolish of me to think that we were going to be the oddballs there, but there was so many things we saw and that I will show in quick illustrations and pictures I find online. I have a gothic ox queen and her fox, a wing-eared man, a plague doctor, two autumn flower girls, two pretty princesses, a joker, and the one that takes the cake, a transformer. Did not anticipate this becoming a miniature comic-con, but at least I could say I bet you I was the only one there with roller skates, which I took because they matched my outfit, so how could I just leave them behind and not bring them? And as you would expect with a group of introverts, we stayed there for an hour and a half and then we went over and got Denny's. Overall, I had a great time and thank you for letting me waste your time.